Don, you know these people out in this this area that come into Cambridge and make it a community? You think Larry's right when he says if you lose your school, it'll tear the heart out of your community? I think he's absolutely wrong. A survey has been made over two-thirds of the state of Iowa, and it shows that the communities from 1936 to 1950, there has been a steady decline in the business and in the services rendered by those towns. Uh, many of those towns have lost their high schools. They've closed up. The survey shows that ha that had not one single bit of effect on the decline in business in those towns. You don't think Cambridge has died then? That Absolutely not. Why oh. should they? Uh, what are we after in our community? Are we after business? Or is it the business of the schools to educate our children? Well, uh, these studies are all right, but some of us are a little leery of them. What, uh, you got any personal experience that will prove to me that uh, there's some way out of this, or some experience that you know about your school? Uh, I had a conversation with a boy that graduated from Cambridge High School. He made application to enter Iowa State College. They would not receive his credits that he had earned in, co in uh, Cambridge High School as entrance into that school, uh, into Iowa well, State. I, I know, but that, that happens lots of places. What, what's the reason for it? What, uh, the reason in our case is inadequate facilities in our school, inadequate curriculum. And we are not able to go into the teacher's well, work Larry's got an answer for that. He says consolidate, and then you've solved your problem. Well, consolidation, that is 30 years too late. I lived on a farm over here 35 years ago when they, all of these schools consolidated. Look what's happened to the consolidated schools. White Oak is closed. Kelly is closed. The pier just northwest of Kelly last year graduated one student. Well, then... John, you don't think that uh, you've got the issues right here. You don't think Larry's right when he says consolidation. Stay no. put or consolidate. No, absolutely you don't think that's not. Right. I do not. Well, what is your solution? This indicates this district, and it shows the situation as it is at present. The teachers that are employed in Cambridge, four in high school, six in Huxley, six in Slater, four in Sheldall, and three in Allen. <laughs> this shows the district, the plan that is uh, proposed by our own historic county Ed board of education. It is the plan that Cambridge shall close its high school, Kelly shall close, Slater shall close, Sheldall shall close. Now those are just high schools. Just the high quote. schools. All right. and form a central high school at Huxley. The schools, as they are now in this district, employ 23 teachers. The reorganized school will employ 14. I, I, I know that all sounds good, but you're too far apart, John. It won't work that way. It is three and a half miles by the road to, from Cambridge to Huxley. The distances are indicated from these schools. Those are good roads. You know they are. I travel them every day. And there's only possibly two or three days a year that those roads are impassable. But, but Why should transportation be a problem? Larry says consolidation will solve all these problems. Now, what more have you got? You've got to have something more than that, or I'm not interested in it. Look at our curriculum. This <laughs> represents the curriculum of our Cambridge school. Above is the regular curriculum. Look at the limited amount that we have of those things in our school. Here is the extracurricular That's chewed up activity. pretty bad there, isn't it? Well, there's nothing there, except you can see. This is the proposed curriculum of a, a reorganized district. Look at the difference. The more studies that they'll have, the more subjects that they can pursue. <coughs> Look at the extracurricular activities. They will have all the 
extracurricular activities of a large school. After all, what do we want in a school? Is this school for the business of our community? Is it for your pleasure and mine as taxpayers? Or is it to educate our children? Mrs. Harker, you have a couple of children that are going to be in school pretty soon in Cambridge. What do you think about this thing? Is the town more important or are the children more important? Well, I have two, soon three over will be school. <laughs> and uh, for my part, I wouldn't want to say that I thought either the school or the community was important because I don't think that you can say one is more important than the other. If you don't have a thriving community, you can't have a thriving school. If you don't have a thriving school, your community is going to suffer. I uh, might say that I represent, or I live in district number five on a farm, and we do our most of our training in Cambridge, I would say 99% of it. Well, if my children are going to go someplace else to school, I think for my part, I would be, have a tendency to trade them somewhere else. And also in Cambridge, there are a great many people uh, living there that work other places. And uh, if their children go someplace else to school, why will they drive someplace else to work and let their children ride someplace else to school? They'll move where that school is. Is everybody, everybody like that? Thing. Now you're hemmed in here between two preachers, so you're probably not. Miss Griffin. Well, John, you were saying about the... Uh, activities we had. I'm wondering what, what the uh, world, we might say, has to offer uh, a city graduate, because they have many uh, activities and many subjects to take. What does the world have to offer a high school graduate in a city that it doesn't have to offer in a small town? Our small town girls and boys seem to rate the same job. You're going to have to go on to college anyway if you specialize in any subject. <clears throat> about that, John. John, they're going to pick on you tonight. <laughs> all right, you can pick on me all you like. You ask what a city graduate of a city school has that yes, Cambridge has not. I'll tell the world. you one thing. They have, they can bridge the gap between high school and college. They're well, better, think, they're I better trained. small town can do, John. I, I never did hear of a situation where a small town, we've had lots of graduates from Cambridge High School who have gone to uh, uh, college and they haven't had any trouble. Uh, Surely our college wouldn't No trouble about their entrance? No. That's right. Are you sure? Well, I can state two or three specific cases for the entrance. Right here, we've got, we've we've got, got uh, Florence. Florence has been out of school since 1949. Maybe Mr. she. Mr. Dyer, how about our uh, representatives that have been air pilots in the Air Corps? I think we have a good uh, percentage that have passed the test, and that's one of the most rigid IQ tests in the service. We've got one here tonight. Uh, you're not a pilot? I'm not a pilot. I can't. Go right back. You pilot a car around. That's right. On the mail route. Oh, John, how many are there of those students that are here tonight that you've got listed up there in those subjects actually received the benefit of those subjects? Now, we can say in our school that each one of our students has the basic and probably a little more than the basic of each one of those subjects up there. He has a chance to participate in them. He does participate in them. And he gets that extra training that I don't think you can possibly get in a larger school. Well, I have an answer to that, too. Uh, in the first place, a survey made by Iowa State College uh, brings out this fact. No high school can operate at its peak of efficiency without at least 200 students. If you drop below 200 students, the cost per pupil goes up as, you, as the number of pupils declines. Uh, you say that they are not getting no any more in this curriculum than here. These, uh, these 14 teachers that we have in this uh, central high school, because of the larger budget, because of the <coughs> better pay that can be offered to them, you can go to the teaching fraternity and you can uh, attract 
teachers who have had specialized training in ma English, in mathematics, in science. You cannot do that on the low salaries that are paid in Cambridge. John, I wish they'd pick on Larry. He's a little bigger, but uh, would you like to explain this chart here of the tax rate?